Hey guys, after playing for a few days already with the newest version of Affinity Suite version 2.6, I can tell you that I think that Affinity Publisher benefit the most from this recent update. At first I was thinking Affinity Photo is the center spotlight, but after digging a bit deeper, I believe the publisher, publisher is way better than in version 2.5. So let's take a look what's new in Affinity Publisher version 2.6. The biggest change is that we can have multi-page spreads. So we are not only dividing to the spine of the book, to the left and right page, we can now make uh, whatever we want. We can make a uh, custom spreads and then, for example, have three on one page for this three folded brochure all right so this is a really really nice change i think something we are not really asked for that much but when it's arrived it's like yeah that's an obvious thing that's a nice feature to have i can tell you i'm guilty of that i was doing my threefold flyers in affinity designer because it was a bit easier working with those artboards and here now we can have multi spreads as a nice feature so now there's no reason to not use publisher for that all right so how can we do that when you're adding a brand new page you will see option to make a regular page flow but you can also make a new spread or extend the spread so instead of adding this new page as a new page we kind of adding it to existing page on the right or left you could say okay so we can insert before or after and we can still decide which master page we follow and if you do that you will i now end up with page six and seven like that okay and then if i do it once more and again i extend it i got three folded paper somehow okay so that's very nice it's it's very handy here we got more control and that's always a good thing to have more control all right so that's a big feature we can got this multi spread documents now and something kind of related to it we can now have also more control when reorganizing organizing pages the all of those new icons you can see right now about moving stuff around adding pages as new spreads moving them around so I would say it's very much related to the feature number one that we got now more refroid control, okay? And that's a good thing because in this kind of software, desktop publishing software, the initial setup is important. So something I always, always mention, like it's better to spend a few more minutes setting up documents and then I like try to fix everything later on. And now it's kind of easier to fix. Maybe something changed. Maybe we got a different size of the paper or we're going to fold this differently, the client change the like properties of the project or then Amazon update some policies, we need to modify something. And now it's easier, okay? And also the third feature somehow related to it, you could say also related to recustomizing uh, page migration here. The page migration was a thing before, but now we can have something like we can anchor stuff to the spine of the book. So take a look here. On the right side, that's something that we got before. So we can add new page in between. And simply this page was moved to the right side, like that. And it's not following the kind of the, the template we set up because the number is now close to the spine. But if you turn it on, we will have opposite, all right? So we can have a bit more control when migrating pages as well. So all of those three big features multi-spreads, all of those referral controls that we can do in the page panel now, and also how the pages will migrate. Now all of that can be adjusted, modified, and controlled. So we don't need to put that much pressure on this initial setup. We can make those changes later on. Also, they finally noticed that some people will never ever print out those PDFs. Now we got digital publishing, so people use a special readers for PDFs, and those readers try to try to usually detect the correct order and guide you through the text. If you got multiple columns, we got pictures and stuff like that. And now we can 
decide manually what is the correct reading order. So if you've got like a very creative layout, you can simply hit the window here at the top and you will see there's a special, special studio for that now called reading order. Click on that, it will pop up like that and you can reorder stuff here. You can even switch off the stuff that you think is not important for the reader. All right, so we can kind of make a correct reading order. This is only important for digital publishing. So people are going to use some kind of reader to read through the PDF. All right, so now it's here. In the last update, they introduced a native QR code tool that I, I've been using a lot, to be honest. I was surprised how often I use that. So to use a QR code tool, you simply go to Shapes, Press and hold all the way down here outside the window. Here's the QR code. And now you can put your URL at the top and simply draw it like any other shape. So that's nice. But what if you are doing those uh, special match fields with those variables? We can design a business card and then we can set a variable for the name, phone number, email, and we can load those variables from like spreadsheet document. So that's nothing new. But now we can also load a QR code from that spreadsheet document. So we can generate those QR codes based on the URL, number, whatever, from that spreadsheet. So that's something for power users and more advanced stuff, but it's here. I really like how they pressing on those QR codes. They're really popular nowadays to put QR codes in publications, business cards, posters. So now it can be automated. So something very handy for power users. And the last thing that everybody forget to mention, Studio Link 2.6. What is Studio Link? Studio Link is here at the very top when we can jump straight to Affinity Designer Tools. Here they are. We can jump straight to Affinity Photo Tools. Here they are. And every new tool from version 2.6 is available to us. So what is the biggest change in Affinity Photo? We got this machine learning AI kind of selection, right? So take a look, I can do that from within Affinity Publisher. So I'm using this machine learning selection from Affinity Photo inside Publisher. And done. All right, so don't forget about that. We got all of the updates from all three programs available for us with Studio Link. So if they improve a pencil tool in Affinity Designer, here it is, grab the pencil tool. Now we can auto-close shapes. So we can just turn on auto-close. And here it is, that's this new feature they just added. Auto-close shapes with pencil tool. All right, so all of that is here. So let's summarize. We got all of the features available in three apps accessible from Studio Link. That's a great feature of this software. QR codes now can be data merged from like spreadsheets like before we did with the names or emails. We got a tool to decide what is the correct reading order for the PDFs that you plan to publish in the digital form. And all three features here at the top, I think they're kind of related because they're about a greater control of pages, how the page flow. So we can have multi-spreads, we can reflow them, whatever we want, and we can also migrate pages a bit better. All right, so as I mentioned, I think Affinity Publisher benefits a lot from this new update 2.6. There are many powerful features for professionals here. And there's also one feature still missing, feature that holding back thousands of people. So that will be our next video already. So I got one more video about update 2.6. In the next one, we're going to focus on the missing features and we're going to check our change log that I've been keeping since version 2.0, all right? So see you in the last video about this update, maybe tomorrow, maybe in like two more days for that. That's the one that we complain, okay? So get ready for your angry rant and see you next time.